Hello everybody and happy Halloween! My name is Taylor and I am the friendly witch of the reading room. But as you can see, we're not in the reading room. We're in my lair, my house. So if you hear any little pitter patter, it might be my cat, it might be a bat, it might even be a frog. But today we're going to be celebrating Halloween with not one, but two books. So our first book we're reading today is A Spoonful of Frogs, written by Casey Lyle. And this will get us in the mood for our fun craft later this video. And our second book is called A Halloween Nut by Arden Druce. So without further ado, I can read our first book, A Spoonful of Frogs. A witch's favorite treat is frog soup. It's easy to make and very healthy too. You start by placing your cauldron over the fire and fill it with water, add a pinch of salt, a little sprinkle of pepper, and 22 cloves of garlic. You chop up your six potatoes and add three carrots and toss them all into the cauldron. You're gonna mix up a tiny cup of fly extract, like those little bugs that fly around. Yeah, a little tiny bit of extract. The last and most important ingredient is a spoonful of frogs. And this will add a kick of flavor and a pop of color. And you can see she's looking at all the frogs that are available. So you need to place the frogs on the spoon. Uh oh, they're hopping around. You have to grab the frogs and put them on the spoon. Get the frogs and put them on the spoon. Now you have to find the frogs since they hopped off the spoon and try to place them on the spoon. You can see they're all hiding in the lizard oil and behind the apples. So try scooping up the frogs with the spoon. If that doesn't work, chase the frogs around until you can catch them. Maybe try trapping them in a pot. You can see she's trying very hard to catch these little frogs. Once you get them in the pot, tip them out onto the spoon. Doesn't look like it's working out very well for her. You're going to put the spoon on the frogs. Slide the frogs onto the spoon. Try a different spoon. Maybe that'll help. But use maybe two spoons to scoop up the frogs. So it's like a little lid. See, maybe she has it this time. Oh, no. You can see the frog jumped out the window. How are we going to make our frog soup? We have to put the frogs on the spoon. You can see she's going to the TV studio, she's running through the park, trying to catch these nasty little frogs. How are we ever going to make our soup? You can see she finally finds them at the swamp. That is the best place to find a frog. Put the frogs on the spoon. Look at them all staring at her. They're like antagonizing her. She slips and screams, frogs! She fell in the swamp. Well, instead of that, maybe we try pickles? That should make a good soup replacement. Pickles are an acceptable substitute for frogs in this recipe. Add a spoonful of pickles and stir well in your cauldron. And bring the soup to a boil for one whole hour. And then serve hot. And enjoy with your friends. So now that we read our first book, I'm going to get us into our second book for this evening called A Halloween Night. And this will get you really in the spooky mood. On Halloween night, when it's dark and scary, who can swoop through the air with a swish and a flurry? I can, said the witch. In a haunted house, surrounded by mist, who can spin shimmering webs with a swirl and a twist? I can, said the spider. On a darkened porch, when the moon is low, who can light a smile and a shine with a glow? I can, said the jack-o'-lantern. And with an eerie light and a shape like a lump, who can walk through closed doors with a thud and a thump? I can, said the ghost. In a field of corn, when breezes mutter, who can stir the wind with a flap and a flutter? I can, said the scarecrow. 
in a twisted tree that's drenched in dew. Who can glide from a branch with a hoo and a hoo? I can, said the owl, and with skulls and some bones, and no matter who can dance in the wind with a clink and a clatter. I can, said the skeleton, hanging upside down in a tree while napping. Who can soar through the air by fluttering and flapping? I can, said the bat, and hutched on a fence, howling sounds you can't miss. Who can wake everyone with a screech and a hiss? I can, said the cat, all in their costumes, ready for fun. Who can frighten everyone? We can, said the children. And this is my favorite part. Look, it's all the little trick-or-treaters on Halloween night. So I hope you will enjoy your Halloween night by participating in trick-or-treat night. But what better way to celebrate Halloween than making our own version of frog soup? But instead of using frogs, we're going to be making some slime. And I'll be sure to make it nice and green, just like the soup, so that way it'll look just like frog soup. Alrighty, now it's time to make some slime. And I made this recipe as easy as possible, so you only need really three things to make slime. You need one whole container of Elmer's glue, preferably like the, I think this is a four ounce. You're going to use this entire thing. So we're going to dump that into the pot. You're going to need contact lens solution, and preferably the one with boric acid. You're going to need one tablespoon of this, and you'll also need a half tablespoon of just baking soda. Those are the only three things you need to make slime. The rest is all decorative. So I have some green dye to make my frog soup, and I also have some little stars to add to make it nice and pretty. So first thing we're going to do is take our glue and empty it into our big old cauldron or a bowl, whatever you want to pour it into. Just make sure you get help from mom because this can be messy. So look, I'm pouring this all out into my cauldron, okay? It's going to make some funny noises. We're going to get it all out because the more glue, the more slime. Okay, there we go. So I got most of that out. And make sure you get all the strings so that way you don't make a mess on mom's table. So I'm going to close that now that it's empty. And now we're going to add a tablespoon of your contact lens solution. So I already have a tablespoon right here, my little measuring spoon. I'm going to do it over the bowl or over the sink so that way I don't make a mess. I'm going to squirt it all the way up to the top. Might take a little bit. All right. And we're going to add that in just like that. Okay. And then you're going to need a half tablespoon of baking soda. Okay. So I usually like to stick the measuring spoon into there and use the lid to make sure it's level. See how I did that? So now I have exactly tablespoon. There we go. And once I have those three ingredients in there, I'm going to take a different spoon, because so I don't want to get my hands too sticky yet, and start stirring. And this might take a little bit, but I promise they'll start sticking together eventually. And if it's still too sticky, just add a little bit more of the contact lens solution, okay? There we go. Another easy way to do this, Elmer's actually has this magic solution. So you can see slime is forming. It's still a little bit sticky. So I'm going to take this off my spoon as best I can. Okay. Look at this. It's turning into slime and it's nice and sticky. And you see it's not sticking to me too much, but I'm going to add a little bit more contact solution because I don't want it to be too sticky, right? I'm going to just squirt a little bit more in there, just like that. I'm going to knead it in there. So you see how I'm kneading it? Whenever I have the little strings, I'm just going to kind of put them in the middle. Just like this. See how it's turning into slime? And this is the fun part. You get to decorate it however you want. There is literally no wrong way to decorate slime. But I'm going to try and make mine themed like the book. So I'm going to add a little bit of green dye. You can use food coloring. I have soap dye just because I don't want my hands getting stained, even though they're already stained pink. So I'm going to add like, let's see, two drops. Let's see, one. Oh, here we go. One. There we go. Two big ones. Two big drops in there. 
We'll see how that goes. All right, let me close that because I don't want dye getting everywhere. So I'm going to fold it into there. You can see there's the green, kind of putting it in the middle. And I'm just going to kind of keep kneading it. And you can see, look, green is starting to come through. And there we go. Okay. And a little bit's getting on my hands, but it comes off actually pretty nice. I recommend using like soap dye if you have it at home, if you're going to make a lot of slime. It doesn't stick to your fingers or stain. All right, and you see, it's turning green, just like frog soup. And the last thing I'm going to add, just because I have it handy, is some glitter. This is just nice and fun. That was pretty hard to open, actually. <laughs> and I'm just going to sprinkle a little bit in there. You can add as much as you want. You can have multiple types of glitter. It's pretty cool. So you can see, there's my glitter. I'm going to just stir it in there to make it nice and shiny. Just like this. And you can see, now we have frog soup slime. So I hope you had fun with me making some slime and reading two books. And I hope you have a spooktacular Halloween.